$106 billion. That's how much money President Biden just requested from Congress to fund several things, including military aid for Ukraine and Israel, funding for our own southern border, humanitarian aid, and money for the Indo-Pacific and Taiwan. So I'm going to explain each of those things to you in a second. But first, you have to understand two things. One, this is called a supplemental budget request. Every president sends these to Congress. Certainly, they're not always this large, but they all do it. And two, this is a request. In the end, because of the Constitution of the United States, the dollar amount and how each of those dollars are spent is solely up to Congress. It's that simple. Zero dollars will leave this country unless Congress approves it. And don't get it twisted. Congress will approve something eventually. Maybe it won't be $106 billion, but it's going to be something significant. The fact is the majority of both the Republican and Democrat party in Congress support funding for all of these items I just listed. And as I've reported repeatedly, especially when we're talking about military funding specifically, when it's approved, it's not like the U.S. just shows up in these random countries and backs up a Brinks truck and just starts to unload cash. No. That's not how it works. The funding goes to the U.S. Defense Department and the Pentagon, which then sends weapons to those specific countries from our stockpiles. Then the Pentagon uses that money to buy more weapons made in America. In fact, of the $106 billion requested by the president today, more than half of that is going to our own Pentagon. One more critically important thing I want you to understand before I talk about the specific numbers the president is requesting today. Just because some dollar amount of money is going to be approved for these foreign aid packages doesn't mean it's taking money away from help for you. You have to understand, it's not either or. It's and. Funding for these issues and funding for the homeland can both happen. And remember, it's up to Congress to decide how to help the American people. So whatever helpful item is important to you, whether it's student loan forgiveness or an expanded child tax credit or health care, whatever it is, it's up to Congress to give that to you. No one else has that power. So you need to contact your lawnmaker and demand, in a respectful way, that he or she pays attention to your needs. Now that we've got that all sorted out, let's talk about this new supplemental budget request and what exactly is in it. The president is asking for about $61 billion for Ukraine military aid. According to the request, that would be used throughout all of 2024. He's also asking for $14 billion for Israel's military defense, especially to resupply Iron Dome. $10 billion of it would be humanitarian aid. $14 billion would be for our own border security here in the United States. That money would be used to add 1,300 more Border Patrol agents on top of the more than 20,000 that are already funded for 2024. It would add 375 new immigration judge teams to process the migrant cases that have been backing up. It would add 1,600 asylum officers to process those asylum claims. It would add 1,000 Customs and Border Protection officers to focus specifically on fentanyl coming across the border. And it would include money to purchase new equipment and cutting-edge technology to monitor the activities of cartels. Seven billion dollars would go to the Indo-Pacific. That money would do several things, including helping our allies like Taiwan build up the capabilities necessary to address the threats coming from adversaries like China. Lastly, the president said he is also going to send over another revised supplemental budget request on top of the one that we're talking about right now. That request would do several things here in this country, like adding money for FEMA to address the natural disasters in places like Maui, the hurricane damage in Florida, and the devastating flooding on the East Coast. It would also include additional funds for the WIC nutrition program for moms and babies and would add money to the child care programs that just expired to help keep costs down for low-income working parents and keep funding the child care centers that serve them. Of course, none of this can go anywhere until there's a House Speaker.